Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Alex and Rachel's renovation of their 85-year-old home is now only 16 days from hitting their budgeted 100. After Rachel fell through the bathroom floor and injured her back, she has decided to step away from the renovation, and Alex is now the sole project manager. I really have to sort of put myself first at this point and rest and take it easy. It's hard, it, me it means I have to take a step back from the build, but I know Alex is going to do a good job and he'll, he'll keep on top of things. To cut costs, Alex painted the changing room himself and then bought in jib installers. I think we looked at things and felt that everything was a bit slow purely because there just weren't enough hands to do all these things and not enough hours in the day. So we got the jib fixers in. So everything's moving really, really fast all of a sudden. And I think by doing that, we've probably brought ourselves back two, two and a half weeks. It might not be enough to stop Alex and Rachel from sliding over the 100-day mark and into the emergency budget they have set aside. But it does mean that Kelsey the Builder can move on to the hardy board cladding and the downstairs ceilings, with the master painters following closely behind. It's a dramatic change since Rachel last saw the rooms. I haven't been here for a week or maybe even two weeks, actually. Um, haven't been that well which means that I get to come in now and see really quite a lot of changes, quite significant changes with the windows going in and glass going in and paint happening. It really, really feels like it's becoming our home and I can really picture this being my bedroom. The walk-in wardrobe. Look at the ceiling, it's awesome. So the bathroom and then here, of course, to go with our black ceiling in the uh, walk-in wardrobe. We're having a black and white bathroom and I'm really, I think actually this is the room Hamish is most excited about and I'm quite excited about this room too. While the bathroom might be my favourite, Rachel's office is a close second. That looks brilliant. So crisp and clean and, oh, so the window. Oh, shoot! <laughs> Mike? Yeah. You know the fresh paint on the window? <laughs> it's quite fresh, isn't it? Yes, we're all here about two, two minutes ago. Two minutes, two minutes down. Do you like touching up paint? <laughs> right here? Yeah, right there. And as Mike fixes up the window frames, outside his apprentice Xavier spray paints the fence. While Jules Moore's landscaping team finish concreting the outdoor dining area and begin working on the garden itself. We're basically just clearing the site and getting preparation for new plantings. Decided to reuse a couple of the existing camellias, so the boys here are digging nice big root balls and transplanting them so that they'll successfully move. Jules's plan is to create a tropical Parisian paradise by lining the path leading to the back garden with Bux's balls and plant sculptures and create an outdoor dining area shaded by the tall trees. Black screens will obscure the tree trunks and provide a touch of luxury to the dining area. And by the Louvertech and pool, Alex and Rachel's original tropical palms will be pruned and infilled with a number of hardy plants. It's all designed to be an easy care garden for Alex and Rachel. Some of the original plants will go to Jules's nursery so that she can give them some tender loving care before replanting them back in the garden. With time starting to run out, the plasterer works throughout the week to complete all of the downstairs rooms, with master painters hard on their heels, and the tilers start sealing all three bathrooms. They'll need the tiles as soon as possible, and Alex heads to the tile depot, but it's a big order, and his truck is struggling. <laughs> Hope there's no big bumps on the way home, Alex. 
At the house, Kelsey starts work on the architraves and skirting boards, but calls in Rachel and me for advice. The question we've got for you is width of the architraves. Currently they're set to be the same as what the skirtings are throughout the house. Yeah. Kelsey and I had a look. We think they're quite wide because it's not just the architrave, it's the sill and everything that gets bigger. Uh, Kelsey's put two marks on, um, a 20 and a 30 mil. That's taking it off. Um, and he's marked up in the middle 25, which would be in the middle. Okay. So, I mean, I quite like that long line there, which yep. I guess is, that must be the 25. That looks about right to me. Yep. To test it out, Kelsey cuts one to the new width. Right. There we go. Ooh. And look how much better that looks. That looks better already. Do you yeah. happy, Kelsey? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is his happy face. Yeah. That's <laughs> your birthday isn't it, Kelsey? Yeah, it is. So look at that nice birthday treat I've given you. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Kelsey. Would you mind ripping all the architraves? Yeah. And while it seems funny now, it's small delays like this that are putting pressure on time and money. But it will also make a huge difference to the house's final look. The house's electrics have also put pressure on the budget. But with the mains cable now replaced, Dean can finalise the wiring for the whole house, install the Beko appliances in the kitchen and the PDL switches and automation. He's rewiring some wiring that is already rewired. That's contingency, I suppose. We just haven't had a bill for it. Five hours to put a light fitting up. Yeah, I've been here the whole time, pretty much on and off since the job started, because as soon as the roof came off, we, we found the problem. And a lot of wires just had to be moved out of the way, then put back in and then moved out, and I've been here a long time. So, yeah, yeah, I am uh, part of the family now. <laughs> and that's what Alex and Rachel need to remember, that despite the tight budget and stress, they're renovating for their family and friends. Happy birthday! Awesome. So I get to buy them out. Thanks, guys. Actually, uh, well, I can't say. <laughs> I yeah. wish the runner. <laughs> yeah. I still really, really enjoy seeing what's happening and seeing the progress. We're lucky in that we haven't had any sort of issues with Kelsey or the tradesmen or anything like that. Everyone's been brilliant. They really have. But <laughs> it would be nice when it comes to the time when there's no one else here, just just we and the family. With only 11 days before their budget runs out, Alex and Rachel are under enormous pressure to finish and move back into their home. So we've moved house yet again, the sort of house to house, house sitting, pet sitting, staying with friends, still missing family life, missing all being together. It is getting to the point though when you just want it to be over. You just want your house back. For Alex, being the only person living on site has reached new lows. Tomorrow morning at 6am, the painters arrive to finish off painting in the kitchen, which is where I've been sleeping in my role as on-site security guard, because at 8 o'clock, endless flooring are here to sand the kitchen floors. So, I'm sleeping in the garage tonight. Quite looking forward to this being finished, to be honest. But there is a ray of hope for Alex and Rachel. Once endless flooring are finished, the kitchen and dining room will be ready, and they'll be one step closer to finishing the renovation. So you're sanding today, putting the, the products on the floor tomorrow. Anything else we need to kind of bear in mind, because I'm, I'm kind of conscious that this is going to be the first done room in, yes. the, in the renovation. Before the first coat go on, goes on, it's important that we manage who comes in here. The polyurethaning, we need to keep cats and people off it because there's a thing we call ghosting. We won't know, but you will in about a year's time. All right. And you'll see this beautiful, slowly evolving cat yeah. paws. So yeah. we need to keep the cat out, the dog out, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. And then how long after you're done in, in the room, how, how many days? 24 hours walk in with socks. Yeah. Normally seven days afterwards, it will be suitably harder. It'll be about 85% sure. hardness. So you can get tradesmen to come back in. Yeah. So while the floor is stripped back to the original Tasmanian oak, Freya and Tui are relegated to the garage with Alex for the next week. In the rest of the house, everyone pushes on towards the 100-day deadline. 
The tilers map out the design for the bathroom floor tiles, and Mike from Master Painters brings in apprentices to complete the ground floor rooms. And it just goes to show how well you've sprayed that too, because you've got, like, Sri's been able to roll that nice and easy. And it leaves him time to work out the stripes for Max's Barcelona FC themed bedroom. We're just determining what size those stripes are so that I can work out the distances. I can't wait to see what Max's room will look like. With the 100 day deadline looming, Rachel and I need to turn our attention to the garden. After only two weeks, the plants Jules took from the backyard are almost ready to replant. So you don't sell to the public, do you? This is just for you, for your stock, for your gardens. Yeah, we find it really good if we can grow certain lines that we use a lot. And, um, and then we've got control on the history of the plant. And, you know, it's so good because we just bring everything in to one place and then ship it off. So where do you want to start, Jules? Should we look at the topiaries first? I think we'll go for the ball section, Hamish. Done. Am I'll I allowed to say that? Trolley, and, <laughs> and then I'll get an umbrella up. too, because it's just starting to rain. Hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Rachel and Jules are going to be trouble. Now, look at that lovely shape over there. That's what your balls will be, you know, for. <laughs> One day when Alex learns to groom correctly, his balls will look perfect. <laughs> All right, back to work. Now, straight in front of us, this is something new here. It's a buxus, but it's called Richard Eye. Yeah, so it shapes really nice. It grows into a circular ball. So this is what we want to do. We want an easy care clipped yes. ball garden, yes. if there is such a thing. Yes, yeah. thank you. OK, Hamish, here's the Lurios. Wahoo! So these are the ones that you've lifted out of Rach and Alex's place? Yeah, I think they're going to be a better plant in the long run by, you know, just Because they have been them. lifted and yeah, divided, yeah. yeah. And so you've got philodendrons over here. Now, where are they going? Philodendrons are going around the pool. This is what I think would be really good in the half line oh, that yes. you've got. Yes. Cut so this half. is a Tahitian line? It is, yeah. Oh, it's nice. Great. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to see it go together, Jules. I know. I know. Oh, the plants look fantastic. Yeah. I'm just waiting for the limes. The limes. In my drink. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> of course. While we dream of lazy afternoons in a tropical Parisian garden, at the house, Alex and Kelsey are figuring out how to complete the renovation in 100 days and within budget. With the wrap due to come off in less than a week, it's proving tricky. Uh, roof on Monday. Does that mean then you and Nathan go inside? Well, we just got that one wall to finish off. Oh, yeah. There. Um, probably about half a day's work, I suppose, mm -hmm. to get that wall finished. And then, I guess, by Tuesday, then you're inside yeah. and it's, what, doors, doors skirtings? Doors, skirtings, yep, all the rest of it. Yeah. OK. Feeling confident? He's got a smile on his face. It's, uh, oh, I know, it's... This, is, uh, this is not... I've just kind of been an exhaustion point. This could, <laughs> this could mean anything at all. Uh, it could mean I'm about to murder somebody. Um, but, no, it's moving really quick, isn't it? You know, it's moving it's as quick as it can quit. Yeah, it, so it couldn't move any faster. No, no. no we'd just be tripping over each other yeah. if we were any quicker. It's a bit of a race at the moment with Kelsey and Nathan needing to get all the, the bits and pieces done so the roofer can come in. Then, as soon as he is out, the wrap comes off, the scaffolding comes down. So it's a kind of a flurry of activity because painters need to paint whilst we've got scaffolding. We have to get the, the downpipes on. All these bits and pieces need to happen before that scaffolding goes. So early half of next week, it's going to be bedlam. There will be people everywhere. And over the next six days, the builders and painters work to a tight deadline, completing the cladding and adding the fascia for the roofer. On day 96, the roofers arrive, and it's vital they finish today. The roof's going on really fast, which is great, because this time tomorrow, there's no wrap on this scaffolding. So if it rains, we'll be in trouble without this roof. Inside the house, the tilers are making good progress with the design of the bathroom floors. I like tiling. I've done tiling before, but not, not like this. <laughs> this is really, really good. And Mike from Master Painters finishes Max's bedroom. Oh, wow, that looks incredible. Oh, those colours are just right. I'm really happy with them. I'm really happy with how wide Mike spaced them. I think Max is going to be blown away. 
With only four more days until the budget runs out, Carpet Quarter on site for a final measure. I'm new to having carpet yeah. lately, so it's the first time, actually, I think we've ever had new carpet, so I'm quite excited. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. Once it's laid, yeah. is there a, t like, do we not stand on it for a day, or, like, does it have to settle? No, it, it's all good to go. So, oh, OK. Um, they'll, they'll lay it, they'll do a quick vacuum, and, and you'll be able to move in, basically. Oh, right, so you can put furniture on it straight Absolutely. away. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know why. I just thought you had to sort of leave it for a couple of days yeah. to sort of settle <laughs> in. Or... No, you can oh, right. enjoy it straight away. <laughs> Brilliant. With the carpet ordered, the house needs to be watertight, but work has stopped on the roof. Got back and found that the roof is kind of three quarters finished. And there's no sign of them coming back today the wrap comes off the house. So we need to get that sorted pretty fast because without the wrap and some gaps around the roof, we're gonna be kind of ad hoc putting plastic and bits and pieces around to try and make sure we don't suddenly end up with a wet house. So there's a bit of a frantic phone around to find out where the hell they are. With only three days left of the budgeted 100 to renovate their house, Alex and Rachel are desperate to finish. But yesterday, the roofers left halfway through the day, and with no sign of them returning, and the wrap and scaffolding due to come off today, it's put the whole renovation in jeopardy. The problem is, this type of roof on the house, they don't really do it anymore. It was almost a specialist order for, for what we needed, and then finding roofers who still do that kind of roof, that's the other trick. So we're kind of limited to who we've got, trying to sort of ask ever so nicely if they'll actually do the job. Which is a bit weird, cos, you know, they're still going to send us a big invoice. <laughs> While builder Kelsey should be concentrating on finishing the skirting boards and the architraves, with rain forecast, he hatches a plan to keep the house and his hard work dry. I might get some temporary, just some of those plastic droppers off the yeah. downpipes, just so we haven't got water pouring, you know, yeah, yeah. onto these. We can no, just get it down the bottom. And then if we can keep a bit of the rack that comes down and, and go over that back temporarily, that'd be good. Yeah. We will see what happens. Yeah. With the delay this close to the 100 days, Alex has accepted they won't make their deadline and that they have to use up the money they've set aside for emergencies. Ideally, you don't want to spend your contingency. And if you can get away with it, it's, you know, it's X amount of dollars not on your mortgage at the end of the whole process. But here we are dipping into it. I just guess we have to be careful that we don't spend the contingency and then some. Elsewhere in the house, the renovation continues, with endless flooring coating the floorboards. In the garden, the concrete has been cut back for the Lirio border around the dining area. And Jules has decided to adapt her original landscaping plan once more. So, Rach, this is the plan that we originally had, and since then we found that, you know, it's evolved into something a wee bit different. Now we've decided to actually take up the edge and put a macrocarpa sleeper in. Yeah. And maybe orientate the screens just a little bit differently mm -hmm. in terms of just zigzagging them. Yeah. And I think that's a better solution. OK. So, so what was the issue as they were? Was it going to be too tight on the corner? Is that...? I just felt that we needed some... just a little bit of screening of initial privacy. Oh, yes. So, yeah, that, that, so by that's doing that, idea. I think if we reuse our lurioke down the side mm -hmm. of the paving, then we have our Buxus hedge, and then we have our screens. We've got three nice layers in there. Love it. The more layering you can you know, mm. do in a landscape, the better it feels. Yeah. So there's a few things on the site that have been problematic for us, but we've worked our way through it. One of the things were the concrete wasn't square, so now we've cut a line in the concrete and we're going to fill it with Mondo, problem solved. The fence over there was arc rightish, and we've sorted that out by putting a screen in front of it. Really, sometimes landscaping is all about problem solving. How's it going? Good, good. 
Hi, Domi. Domi, this yeah. is Rach. Hi, nice, nice to meet Alex's you. wife. Hello. Nice and, to meet you. Uh, he's done a special delivery for us oh, today. Oh, thank you very and much. Nice. Thank you. And the sleepers, yeah. because we basically, you know, we decided this in the last minute yeah. to get the sleepers. The sleepers are coming about one o'clock, Dom. Yeah. Yeah. I'll go oh, do a second trip. A Come special delivery oh, on the long trailer awesome. from Carter's. Yeah. yeah thank, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. My pleasure. All right. Well, we look forward to all the posts. Do you need a hand, Dom? Bring I'll be okay. I've got this, yep. Okay, you got this. Yeah. While Dom flexes his muscles with the landscaping materials, there's been a development with the roof. Oh, the good news is the roofers have arrived, and just as the rain started, which is good because the wrap people haven't come yet to take the wrap off, so I'm not chasing them anytime soon. Roofers are having a quick scope around now. They seem to think that this was uh, pretty simple for them, so everyone's feeling quite cheerful now, which is good. Luckily for Alex, Rapid and South Pacific scaffolding delay removing the wrap and the framework until the next morning. Rapid are on site first, revealing the house for the first time in 98 days. And South Pacific scaffolding aren't far behind. Wow! That's amazing! It looks like it was supposed to be there. Looks looks right. Hamish has done really well, really well with those outside colours. I love them. It looks just right. It looks like the second story was always supposed to be there or always was there. I love it. Love it. But Rachel's good mood doesn't last long when she discovers the decision to bring in jib plasterboard fixes to push the project along has come back to haunt them in the master ensuite. Arsonist is doing a wonderful job on the bathroom, come to the final wall that he needs to complete, and um, there's an issue. The wall's not, uh, it's not flat, it bows. And then pretty much the whole length of this wall it's, it's not flat, and you, I mean, even I know you can't put tiles on a surface that's not flat, it's not going to work. It must be something in the pond, right? Yeah. Something could be hurt. Yeah. That's what I can't do. It's not too bad, I think, yeah. Should we just cut that bit out and have a look? Artemis likes to do room by room. He's very precise, which is, you know, I like that. So he doesn't want to move on to the next bathroom until he's completed this one. So he can't do anything. And just gonna have to wait to see how we can how we can sort this out. It's another delay that could prove costly for Alex and Rachel. Is it the waste pipe? Is it the waste pipe or is it the waste pipe? So we can put a bit, oh, right, got to put a bit of jib back and take a bit of the back out of it. Oh. Time can be one of the biggest devils that you get in the mix. The pressure starts to come on to finish, finish, finish. The walls were never packed out to be level. Wasted time having the contractors do it, wasted time having Kelsey having to redo it. So you can see it as a compounding problem that all just comes down to time frame and speed. Due to multiple delays throughout the renovation, Alex and Rachel have accepted they will tip over the 100-day deadline and begin using the contingency money they had set aside for emergencies. With one of the main ensuite walls not leveled before the installers attached the jib plasterboard, it's an extra delay they could have done without. He's uh, managed to move the pipe back just a little bit and also he's putting up some new jib and he's just seems to be sort of skimming the back off so it's less wide, slightly less fat, so it'll just sort of sit in more flush. For builder Kelsey, the delays are just as frustrating, but he's more interested in quality than the time frame. There's been a lot going on. We've got tilers, painters, you know, sparkies, you know, all trying to get in each room and do their job, so it slows it down a bit. I guess the thing is for the owner, they can see like it's close, it's very close to them, you know, but there is still a lot of work to do, which they probably don't see, so that's where they sort of think, oh, we can move in in a week's time, but it's still reality is that it's a couple of weeks. And with Alex at work, the builders are who the other tradespeople turn to when they have questions. 
which is in turn delaying Kelsey finishing. He's labelled these bedrooms one, two, three, four, and five, but or, uh, but I don't know which ones. <laughs> which one? Yeah. Especially when I'm not there, I'm not there to ask something. They just go straight to the builders, and they end up all over the house. Nothing's actually getting finished. So the plan is we need to finish upstairs. There's a couple of architraves and a little bit of skirting on the staircase to do. That means the painters have got the entire upstairs to themselves. We just need to be really methodical now, otherwise our 100 days is going to turn into 120, 130, more, you know? With the sealant on the new plasterboard left to dry, it will be another day before the tiling in the master ensuite can be completed, which is more time taken from Alex and Rachel's emergency funds. But outside, South Pacific scaffolding finish, just as Alex arrives back. I think Hamish has nailed it with the colour. Looks amazing. I think Kelsey and Nathan have done an unbelievable job. The house looks like it should be. It looks like it's a 100-year-old house. It's amazing. The house does look amazing. And despite the setbacks and the delays, it will be well worth it. Day 99, and Alex and Rachel are only one day away from dipping into their contingency budget. In the kitchen, the floor is now complete and closed off until it dries. In the back garden, the screen posts are now set in concrete. And Dom from Carter's is back with the last of the Macrocarpa sleepers, which will be used to tie in the older parts of the garden with Jules's plan. There's an old line of Macrocarpa coming down, so we've just added to it. It also gives our plant crew something to work with. They've got some elevation to their gardens now and it's going to let the plants do the talking because that's what we want. We want the plants and the garden to be what you look at, what you focus on. For the screens, their heights will be staggered to add interest. And there's an extra special element James is adding that will really give them a touch of luxury. I'm going to start putting the sheets in. Once that happens, we can start designing what we're going to do with our espalier wire. The purpose of that is so we can plant some creeper plants, like star jasmine, to creep up the wires and kind of create like a growing wall. With the sealant now dry, Artinus and his team finish tiling the master ensuite and move on to Macy's bathroom. But I've been called on site about the bathroom tiles and I have to break the bad news to Alex and Rachel. You might be able to see there's a slight scallop in the middle. Okay. They yeah. go in. Yeah. If you run your hand across the top, you can feel that it drops oh, in, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, the problem with that is when you lay them in a brick formation, mm -hmm. they run out, and then the offcut of the tile that runs to the corner goes around. That way, it actually looks like there's a solid brick in the corner. Problem is, with the mm. scallop, when you cut a mitre, and this one's actually on the end, so it's relatively straight, but you can see uh, they, don't, they don't mitre. Bit, yes. And when you've got two bits like this, they don't mitre at all. So the only way to fix it is for us to, instead of doing them in a brick fashion, yep. we have to stack them in the bathroom. Okay, yeah. but that's right. what so we'll do then. That's, that's the right. option. Well, do you go and tell them? Yes, I already told them to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was like trying to keep the, keep the speed up, and I was like, oh, well, I, I really didn't see any other option. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, shall I stack them? And I went, yes. Okay. It looks like I got away with that, and it does mean the tilers aren't delayed. Upstairs, Kelsey has finished the architraves and skirtings in the office and hung the closet doors. But it's raised issues with the built-in desk Rachel has ordered. I've been in touch with Mel from Wardrobes Plus. Yeah. And I had a bit of a, mm, just a red flag about the length of this desk, because now the cupboard doors are in. Yeah. I'm just not 100% sure that the clearance... Because it runs the length of the window. Exactly. Yeah, the so it's going to exactly... be... Well, it's going to be. Yeah, very she tight. she said it will it's it will work. Yeah. But it is tight, and yeah. also I just think perhaps for the size of the room, the desk doesn't need to be quite no, that big. No, that's a lot of desk. So if you could help me measure, yeah. thank you. See, teamwork mm -hmm. makes the dream work. <laughs> so is two point four. I think we could actually do two point two. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. That feels good. Okay, cool. Wonderful. Brilliant. Well, do you want okay, two point two. I need to tell her this morning um, before it's. Actually built. That's oh, good that we're, that. that we're not too late. And that's a good tip. Always make sure you're happy with the measurements before anything custom made is built. 
Oxygenair are also on site today, installing the upstairs heat pumps. And with the scaffolding now removed, they can finish off the exterior ducting. Before we started all this renovation business, we have two heat pumps in the house. So that we could move on and get stuff done, Kelsey basically just put the pipes outside and built the house around it. The next step in the process is to actually get those pipes cut, put some trunking in to hide those pipes. It just starts to look done because all these little bits and pieces are all just part of the puzzle. It's day 100, and Alex and Rachel are now using up their contingency budget, which is supposed to be set aside for emergencies and delays. They now need to finish the renovation as soon as possible. There's so much to do, little bits and pieces everywhere. It's almost I wonder if anything will actually ever be done. We'll move in and there'll still be things to finish. I've been where Alex and Rachel are now. I just wanted it over. You know, and then two weeks later, once it was all finished, I was fine. It's nearly there, and they're on the home straight, and this should be a pleasurable and enjoyable part of the process. Taking your time at the end and actually soaking it up and just enjoying it and letting it be what it'll be is very hard to do, but you kind of got to do it. Over the last 100 days of renovation, Alex and Rachel's 85-year-old cottage has thrown up a series of surprises. From unsafe electrics through to floors and walls being rotten or not level. With Alex and Rachel now relying on their contingency money, the pressure is on to finish the house as soon as possible. I don't know if it's stress, it's more just, I'm, I'm just really tired. It feels like nothing's happening, but everyone's working all day, so stuff is happening. It's just you don't get that moment where you open a door and something's done. I understand Alex's frustration, but we're at the point where the craftsmanship really matters. Take a look at the quality of that mitre that runs down the corner of Macy's bathroom wall. Absolutely perfect. You have little details like this, which is the finishing around the staircase. The workmanship is flawless. It's beautiful. The plastering, the way it's finished where the transition of the ceiling runs around, magnificent. And uh, that's why this part of the process takes time. For Kelsey, it's the quality of the workmanship he's concerned with. It is actually going quite well. Like, it is advancing, you know, quite rapidly. to me, quite fast, and it's coming together really well. I guess for the owner, they can, at this stage, they can look, oh, we're, near, we're pretty much there. Let's move in next weekend, but it's not quite. No. At that stage, you know, there's still a lot of work that has to well, take place. It's the Little, detail. Yeah. Today, you were in um, doing the door jams in a wardrobe, and you've still got to do skirtings in wardrobes. Yeah. You've still got to do architrave. Which takes as much time as doing a whole room, in a way, because you've still got the same amount of corners and all that side and, of it. So, yeah. And that's it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's the same amount of work because it comes down to cuts. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's where people get lost, because no one goes and looks inside the wardrobe. No. They, they see a yeah, room, yeah. you know, and it's got to be done right. Yeah, I guess it's like my reputation as well, that I, you know, I'd like to do a good job everywhere I go, because that leads to more work down the road kind of thing. I won't sort of take any shortcuts or anything like that, no matter how much pressure's on, because that just takes what it takes, and yeah, got to do a proper job. Over the next few days, everyone on site works as fast as possible to finish, with the tilers completing the main ensuite bathroom, which means the shower installer can begin fitting the shower doors. Yeah, so there should be five boxes. There should be five boxes. We didn't get five boxes. Okay. Yeah. So we're missing one complete shower. Complete shower, yeah. Right. I'm so certain that we only got three boxes delivered. Yeah, we did get three boxes. Yeah, because that was me thinking done. Three boxes, three showers. Yeah. So why don't we look in the garage, just in case it is there? Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, it is, but OK. So the guys come to fit the showers, and turns out we don't actually have all the showers here. So we're missing a complete shower. We're missing the big corner shower for our master on suites. And today's Friday, of course, so there's no way we're going to get it delivered today. Yeah, another delay. With no sign of the missing shower in the packed garage, Alex is straight on the phone to Jeff at Pex Plumbing. Hey, um, the installer's just going through, and it looks like we don't have all the showers. We just don't have the round curved one. Do you, do you have, have, to see whether do you have one? Is there, uh, 
This is just all consuming because I'm either here doing it or I'm at work, so I come back, so I'm, you know, 11 at night, I'm still essentially renovating. And then six in the morning, I'm renovating before I go to work. <laughs> yeah, but I guess that's what you, if you're so called project managing it, yeah, that's what happens. It's another delay that'll stretch their budget. And while Alex heads off to pick up the missing master ensuite shower, Rachel has to deal with another supply problem. This time, it's the tiles. I've actually ran out of tiles. One, so Are you serious? Yeah, I'm about 25 tiles short. Really? Oh, I thought you were to, joking. To you've finish. really run, no, out, no, you've no, run no, out of tiles. Yeah, 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 I did. Which is why this isn't yeah, finished. Yeah, it's not, it's not finished. Oh, <laughs> don't tell me you need them today. Do you? I, I, I would need it today, yeah. Oh, I would need it today for finishing. Okay. Idea. I've been better. <laughs> I've just spoken to John, the tiler, and they've run out of tiles. Oh, by how much? Good box, I think, of the tiles for the main family bathroom. OK, no drama. I can pick some of those up for you. Don't you worry, OK? Can you really? I'm, uh, I'm... Oh, oh, Hamish, you're an absolute lifesaver. No drama. This is not <laughs> an uncommon <uncommonly> occurrence. <laughs> Please do. OK, Please thank you in. so much. Bye. Bye. He needs to take his big breath and it will finish, it will get finished. Don't rush it. We're nearly there. Whew. Every second counts. So I head straight to the tile depot. Nothing like a last minute delivery to get the heart pumping. Hello. Hello. Oh, the tiles. I'll, I'll oh. carry these racks, oh. Debbie. Thank you. You're an absolute lifesaver. Tiles. Back on schedule. Operation tile is in effect. And super design Dodd's work here is done. And across town, Alex has picked up the master ensuite shower. Got there in the nick of time because it's Friday afternoon. They shut the warehouse at 3 o'clock. I got there at 5 to 3. So just in the nick of time, we have it because the installer is back on Monday morning. So you can now install that shower, which is in a box behind me. On Monday morning, the last delivery for the house's exterior arrives. We went online to Craft Built, and you just order it. So we've got the pillars, we've got the handrail for the staircase, we've got fret work as well, which is going to make the pillars look really ornate. And it just gets delivered. Easy. In the back garden, Jules Moore and her landscaping team are back to finish the design for the back garden including lights around the pool and along the macrocarpa sleepers. And in the master ensuite, it's a tight fit as both the shower installer and the plumber attempt to finish the bathroom. And Alex and Rachel ordering their bathroom fittings well in advance has paid off for the plumber mark. Remember how fiddly it was here with the cavity slider, trying to get the plumbing in and the door to open? So at least Alex had all his gear here, we knew what he wanted, so we knew all the measurements and it helped us sort of work it all out then instead of now. That means it's an easy installation for the bathroom fixtures. And with Rob from Schneider Electrical back with the icons for all the switches, it's time for Alex to have a bit of fun. I can see that you're using a few threes and fours and stuff, so... Oh, yeah, that's where you know, I... Yeah. You're never going to remember what half of them do. Oh, seriously, the one by the back door, oh, it's been there eight years, still no idea. <laughs> we can make it so much easier. Yeah. I'm reasonably confident that's the spotlight. OK. Um, but I'm going to actually have to go outside and check. <laughs> Let's do it too well. I'm going to turn it on. Yep. So my, my switch for the spotlight, I'll go with... Man with, okay. with light so that's, shining. that's this one you're so that'll be that one. Okay, well, watch how easy this is. We okay. pop that one out, all right. and all we do is we just clip that back in. So, because you know what, you're just going to leave me a load of these. I'm going to leave you. I'm going to spend the next can. fortnight just playing around with these. <laughs> this is possibly my, my most fun moment <laughs> in in a hundred in the ish days of renovation. Oh, awesome. Uh, this is the most fun bit. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> At least Alex has a smile on his face, which doesn't last that long. 
With rain setting in for the next few days, and the work slows as the master painters struggle to dry their painting. And builder Kelsey needs fine weather to cut the architraves. On day 106, it finally clears. And with the carpet being laid the next day, everyone on site is pushed for time. I think it's fair to say it's pretty chaotic today. There's so much happening. We've got the electrician, the builders, the tilers, the plumbers. We've got Caroline from Window Treatments um, beginning our beautiful blinds and shutters, which I'm very excited about. And it's really, actually really, really exciting. It feels like we're getting so close to the end. Do you want the good news? Yes, please. Well, OK, do you want the, the interesting, challenging news? What's happening? <laughs> What's happened? Uh, so the carpet might be today. Today? It's either today or next week. Are you serious? I'm serious. But it's meant to be tomorrow. I know, but there's nobody available tomorrow. We're not ready today. Well, we might need to be. But they wanted the house clear of people. Well, that's just not happening, is it? I, uh, Are you serious? Well, they're calling me back. And a few minutes later... <laughs> Hello. Hi, Alex. <laughs> OK, so what we can do today is get the boys up there prepping the job. We should be able to finish it tomorrow. But... Fantastic. I can't, I can't give you a 100% no. unfortunately. And, and they'll be heading to you soon. Cool. So roughly what time, just so we can make sure we start clearing up? Uh, they'll be there in an hour. OK, cool. <laughs> OK. Brilliant, thank you. Yeah. See ya. Yeah. Bye. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> the carpet's coming in an hour. I'll tell the boys. Next week... It feels like it's some kind of crucial judgement day. Every second counts. We're going to beat this rain, hopefully. As they tip over the budget. It looks pretty alarmist, being 300% over budget. But the result will be worth it. Cheers, Cheers. Cheers. Alex, well done. Cheers.